In this short video, I'm going to show you the integration between ProtoStructure and Revit using our ProtoBIM 2019 application. So opening up any model inside of uh, ProtoStructure, um, you can view the model that you want to communicate into Revit. Now at the same time, you'll come in and load Revit uh, Rivet, Rivet application. I'm using the 2019 version. Uh, we are BAP group compatible to 2018 and I believe 2017 also. So on loading uh, Revit, uh, just be aware that you also need to load um, a structural template at this point which we have created. Okay, so this allows us to map the sections across into Revit. So I'm going to create a new project um, and I can come and browse and select a construction template and I'm going to load the protostructure metric template here. So this will map in unique sections into, Proto, into Revit as well as uh, pick up the standard Revit um, sections with, uh, within the process of mapping. So let me open this and hit OK and it will now load, uh, load Revit and, um, and together with the template. Now inside of Revit you'll notice that there is an add-in here called ProtoBIM and this add-in um, is uh, uh, automatically installed on top of Revit um, and it is the ProtoBIM 2019 application. And this is available free for download uh, through the website um, and if you are in the support portal then you can pick it up there and download and install it uh, free. So I'm going to import the model from ProtoStructure so we can come in here and pick this up <coughs> and um, I can then come and choose the project that I would like to import. So um, if we come back to our ProtoStructure model here we can talk, see it's called a Construction Sing and if I just come in here and we grab, grab this model Construction Sing you'll notice that there's a file here uh, in the project directory called Construction Sing .prota, and this is the file that we pick up and then this will then directly write into Revit. So we can um, we, we just go through this, the prompts here, so I'm on next. Now when you do bring it in, you have an option as a first time import, or you can update an existing model. So this being the first time we bring it into Revit, I'll call it first time import. You can also selectively choose which floors you want to bring in. So you don't need to bring the whole model in, but um, or you can select everything. And you can also choose what parts of the model you would like to import. There's options in terms of how the slabs are set up as well that you can you can choose from. If I just start this process, it will then map the uh, model in um, directly into Revit. Now we write directly an RVT file into the Revit system. So this is reasonably quick, it's just finishing off. And then you'll see that the model is now recreated in the Revit environment. So if I just, if I just uh, at this point, um, close this, okay, and you'll see that the there's a model that's been created here. Okay, if we go to views, uh, we can then look at the three D model in Revit, and you can play with the 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 type of um, um, shading and so on that's shown in here. Often the slabs and so on are shown in this brown color. If you want to remove uh, the that toning, then you need to just turn the analytical flaws off within the model, and then and then. They are, then, um, they are then set up. Let me do that one more time. Um, so if we go in the floor model category and we just uh, apply apply this, then you'll see that this, that cleans the model up in here. So we've recreated the model here. Now the important thing to note is that everything is communicated physically exactly where it was positioned inside of protostructure. So protostructure being a physical modeling, but structural BIM physical modeling system as well, this will all be picked up. So if you've got you know, beams that are aligned to the the face of the column, okay, offsets, openings, uh, all, all, everything that is physical about the model will be communicated into Revit. Okay, so you have exactly the same model that we define inside of protostructure here being established inside of the, the Revit model. So that opening there, for example, you know, the, 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 this column being flush with this beam, this is protruding, okay, this is exactly the, the same scenario inside of Revit structure. So the same physical geometry will be established inside Revit uh, that you take from 
from British structure, and that includes drops, openings, sloping members, um, found uh, uh, slab profiles, all that type of thing will be will be communicated. Now, now once you <clears throat> now the other thing to note in here is that when it does recreate these things, you'll notice that we have special um, <clears throat> uh, families that we have created. So there's a product structure concrete column and you can see that this is an angular column and this is not um, something that is readily be read of you can readily map to inside of Revit so we have created these as part of the product structure template okay and um, but however standard shapes that are commonly available in Revit it will automatically pick up and map to okay um, once you're in here once you're into this environment uh, you can uh, make changes now just just to note that when you are modeling in the Revit environment, you need to make sure that the models, the elements that you do create are structural elements. Okay, they are set as being structural elements. Walls and slabs, for example, must be designated as structural. Okay, we also recommend that if you are creating in the Revit environment that you may use grid lines to help you with set out and the like. Now once you've got the model in Revit, you can begin the process of coordination. Now obviously within a typical Revit model you'll also have the architecture, so you may have uh, doors, windows, um, other architectural cladding finishes the, and the like in the model. And this then um, initiates the process of coordination. So you, you, for example, if the mechanical electrical services were in the model <coughs> and you um, uh, and a beam was perhaps clashing with the model, uh, then you can pick those up. So at this point in time you may run Navis works, um, you may integrate the architectural model in and, and begin the process of coordination. Now at any time during this process you can make changes in the, in, to the model in here. So if I wanted to say for example remove these elements, um, I can. Okay, If I, um, as a part of the coordination process, maybe I wanted to create other elements in the model here, I can easily come in here and do that. So, um, <clears throat> um, so I can come in, we can go to structure, we want to model some beams for example and I'd like to model these at the first level one okay um, you can come in here and choose sections from the library so it could be a UB as I mentioned we're just picking up here the standard uh, Revit, Revit profile sections here can be, be picked up and then um, I can then come in and start that process of creating some additional elements so if I want to uh, place um, these um, uh, these members, for example, I can just choose, and then we can happily come in and model those. Okay, so maybe I want to put in a couple of beams there. Okay, um, you know you can you can you can pick these up and model these wherever you like. So uh, maybe I want to finish that off and just connect these two floors. Okay, um, but let's just just assume we've got that beam coming over to that, that column face there. There we go. <coughs> Okay, um, we can make other changes in here. Um, if you come and pick up this column here, maybe um, at the moment that's just a standard rectangular column. Okay, perhaps I'd like to change it to a, a, a <coughs> perhaps a round column. Okay, so you can just come and choose, and then you can adapt the model. Similarly, here this this beam, which is is currently um, uh, a 500 deep uh, section, I can come and modify it. Maybe I want to make it a, a 600 by um, a 300 section. So the, the idea is that you just work with the model and make the changes as you, as you go. <coughs> now once I'm, I'm finished at this point, <coughs> okay, I then want to come in and export this back to product structure. So if I just hit export, okay, um, we can then map this back into um, into the uh, product structure uh, file. So what I'm going to do is choose exactly the same model file model that we, we uh, brought in. Okay, select that and then just hit OK. And now it's going to come and write this back into into product structure. Okay. So this begins the process of us being able to round trip models back into the, the product structure environment. So you can see here it's just going through that process of writing the data. Okay. And and if I come back and <coughs> open up product structure now, this is the same model that we're working with. Okay, then here uh, at this point I'm going to uh, come in and, and go to file, we're going to import and we can bring this back in from Revit Structure. <coughs> so I'm going to update the existing model. I can choose what I want to update here. 
Now, um, I may wish to um, leave, for example, uh, any concrete columns that were deleted. Um, I I want to um, uh, delete, okay, or I can choose. I can choose here. So, so if, for example, I want to audit the model before I accept any changes, um, anything that was deleted inside of Revit, I wish to pick up um, and, and and process manually. Um, here, I can. I can do this, okay. So, and you can choose to toggle these on and off if you if you wish, okay. So, so I'm going to just um, bring this back in, okay. And it's now going to come and update the um, the model, okay. Um, I can just do a quick check of it, okay. Make sure that the model is um, okay, and then and then if I close this down, you'll see that the the model has now been recreated, okay. Now, um, if I just click on these, you can see here <coughs> this beam was deleted. It will take me to that part of the model. So I can come in here and quickly audit uh, the model. And, um, and I might then want to accept that these have been deleted and these elements can be removed from the, the model. Now, if a beam has been updated, you can just click on that and see that it's been updated. There's an audit here so you can actually see what changes have occurred. So this beam has increased in size from 250 by 500 to 600 by 300, which is what we created. If I, if I click on this column here, you can see that this column was uh, is updated to a 400 by 400 circular section. Okay, so 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 this audit trail will then show you uh, what what has been created and also what's new. Okay, so visually you'll be able to see uh, what what has been changed within the model. Okay, now um, <clears throat> um, if I just if I just uh, close this down, okay, uh, this is an, uh, the main um, visual interrogation, and then there's an interrogation status here that you can turn on. So if I just choose to turn that off, we can back into the the normal modeling and the normal modeling environment. Now what we could do at this point is uh, maybe let's come and continue to work with the model. Uh, we may want to um, add some, say, purlins to that frame. Okay, uh, I'll choose some different sections here that I might want to apply um, some uh, UC purlins. I uh, might be happy with that set out, so we can just accept that. Um, at the same time, I may also wish to put in some braces in the model. So let's just brace up uh, a couple of bays here. We can choose columns, and then and then we can uh, quickly, quickly come around and make some uh, continual changes as this model evolves and, and develops. Uh, perhaps I'll break brace this side as well. That might be the uh, how we want to work with this. So at the same time, you may also uh, update the design. You may do some design checks. You may continue with the analysis uh, processes. Um, but um, at this point, uh, when you want to start to communicate the model back into Revit, the changes that have occurred um, as a consequence of the ongoing design, uh, then make sure you do save the model again. So just update the model here, uh, save that. And then um, at this point, I'm just going to, to come back into, let's let that finish off saving, I'm going to come back into Revit. And again, we can just go back to ProtoBIM. I'm going to come back and import this again. Okay, and again, we can come and just choose that same file uh, and pick this up. Um, and uh, you can see it's previewing there with the new bracing in it. Uh, you can, if you, if you know that other things have not, not going to be updated, you can just manipulate this tree and just choose what you want to bring in. But you can see that the update existing model is selected and we can then um, start that process of bringing that up to date. Okay, so now it's just coming in and re-importing all the elements within the model dating levels and purlins and so on uh, and then if I just, just close this down you can see that the model has been updated to include uh, the new elements that we created out within within uh, uh, protostructure just now. So this, this process can be repeated as many times as you like. You can go back and forward between uh, Revit and, and protostructure. Uh, you can synchronize the models and you can also track the changes that have occurred. Okay so that's the, um, the latest update to Protostructure 2019 uh, with ProtoBIM 2019. Um, ongoing development is occurring. We are not stopping. So you'll see some very nice other enhancements occurring during the course of this year. We're also starting to look at things like mapping and reinforcement. So we'll keep you posted as, as these evolve. So I hope you found that informative and informative, and we look forward to helping you uh, integrate your projects with uh, BIM platforms like Revit. If you do have any questions, please contact us through support 
uh, in Asia. That's Asia Support at protosoftware.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you.